Welcome to Boost Blue Club Sports Football uh, Talk. Uh, brought to you by our friends over at Jack Cook's Club at 436 Dundas Street West in the great city of Belleville, Ontario. Go see Ashley for all of your uh, wing and uh, pub needs. Follow them also on Facebook, and they also have daily daily deals there as well. Gentlemen, how are we doing today? How are we doing? Pretty good, buddy. Just getting back from Jack Pubs, having some uh, wings and some beer before football tonight. And just uh, we're recording Thursday here, so just getting ready to uh, – to watch the Cowboys cover the spread, I think. Exactly. That is that is the key today, guys. It <laughs> is, uh, we are filming on a Thursday, so the football game is on. I'm watching it now. It's 7-7. So I, I think the Cowboys are going to cover the spread. We'll get into that stuff uh, soon. Chris, how's everything going with you, man? Everything good? Good, good. Excited for Sunday, for sure. And just watching uh, watching the game right now, like the rest of you guys. So so what did you guys think of let's, – let's, let's just rewind the weekend. Anybody watch any college ball? Did you watch any college ball at all? Uh, not after I lost all my money by like 11 a.m. Saturday, so no, I gave up. I'm not talking I, about the money, but just college ball in general. I was fo- – I followed, yeah, yeah. Dude, but to watch the fans in the stands, I don't care who you are, after a year of watching like social distance and all this stuff, the fans came alive with the entrances and everybody was jacked up and ready to go. I have I have I have goosebumps talking about it on how amazing it was to be able to watch college ball this week. And we got the NFL back. It almost looks like the United States is, is basically back to normal. And I and we're pretty stoked. I'm pretty stoked on that. And I'm sure everybody else is as, as we are and everybody else in the world is. Yeah, yeah. And on that note, JM, did you see uh, Virginia Tech against uh, North Carolina? And I think they they start with Enter Sandman and the yeah. whole the whole that place was, just erupts. That was, a, that was the one I was talking about, watching the guys jump and, and cheer and everybody's happy. And I'm like, Oh, this is what this is what you need. That's the that's the time you want five sound bars. Crank it up, kick the wives and kids out of the house, have a beer, have a cigarette, whatever you're smoking, you have it, and you just enjoy the moment. Get your popcorn, your chicken wings from Jack Pops, and you just go, you just go Jack Cook Pops, and you just go to town. I think it was amazing, and I'm I'm pretty stoked for this weekend in football. I'll have all my TVs going, I'll have everything ready to go uh, for the weekend. Uh, with that being said, you guys want to jump right into it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So let's. All right, guys. I just just a quickly one. Uh, what are we doing prediction wise? We can edit it out if you want. But prediction wise for tonight's game, Dallas and Tampa Bay. Bucks were favored while well, they were favored by I think it was eight and a half uh, before the game started. If we're doing a pick 'em, I, I'm gonna go. I'll, let me go first. We're doing a pick 'em. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Tampa. But if we're calling spread, I'm gonna call. I'm gonna pick the Cowboys. But if you're just going straight pick 'em, I gotta go. I gotta go with the Bucks on this one. Yeah, I, I'd be the same on that. I mean, I think uh, I don't know. I hate doing pickums when a team's like nine and a half. So I'll take the spread. I think I think Tampa Bay probably wins by like seven, you know, seven or eight points. So if I was betting, I would probably pass on it. But uh, I take the Cowboys pl- plus the nine. I had it at nine and a half. That's what I checked before. So I take the Cowboys plus nine and a half for sure. Yeah, it got up to nine and a half, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really like the game much. I would have took the the box to win before the game started. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, it is what it is. Is that going to be the biggest spread in the first six weeks? You think? I think that's going to be the biggest. If we're talking spreads, I want to say I think that's the biggest spread we're going to see uh, for the next couple of weeks because that's a massive spread. That's the biggest spread this week. Yeah. Well, I, I think it'll be the biggest spread for a few weeks. I don't see anything coming down the pipe that's even going to warrant that that um, that much of a spread in it. I don't know, um, Jam. I think once you see Houston lose to Jacksonville this week, I think Houston's going to be like a my, like a plus 17 in like every game this year. They're going to be – you're still going with they're going to be that bad, eh? I, I, think they're gonna, I think they're going to lose this week into Jacksonville, then everyone's going to realize like shit. Like they're going to be – uh they're going to be the worst team in football this year. And I think once you get to week four, five, and six, they'll probably be like plus – Plus 14 and a half points at least, I think. So I don't think the nine and a half is uh is too crazy right now. Wow. Okay. So that's what you're doing. Um, let's just jump into some of the picks we got going on Sunday. Uh, we're gonna go with uh, the first one on the on the sheet I got is uh Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons going at it at uh, 1 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, who do you guys like in that one? And uh, what do you guys see happening? So I, I just can't wrap around uh Wrap my head around the fact that the Falcons are uh, favored by three and a half points. 
Atlanta has a lot of question marks on offensive and the defensive line. Like Alex Max gone, they lost a lot of their defense. Uh, new coach, so and the Eagles are the same way. A lot of new faces, uh, new coach as well. But I think the uh, Eagles have more talent with Hertz, and uh, and so I see the Eagles winning the game. Yeah, well, what about you, my friend? See, uh, you know, this is a tough one because, I mean, they're both two really bad teams. I never like to put money on Atlanta just because, uh, I don't know, I just think they're a horrible team to bet on. They're inconsistent. Matt Ryan, you never know what you're going to get from him. He's going to be MVP or he's going to be like the 25th best quarterback in the league. So I'm going to fade the game. I think Philadelphia is kind of in this rebuilding stage right now. If you if you made me pick, I would take the Falcons, and I'd probably take the Falcons minus three. That's where the spread is at right now. I'm just not sure if I'm uh, I'm a believer in Jalen right now. I mean, uh, he'd come out and start throwing the ball and make me a believer. But for, for right now, I think I would just uh, – I would take Matt Ryan over Jalen Hurts. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, basically, I think I think Fleming, you and I are in the same boat. Um, I hate both teams. I really hate Philly, so I, I really, really hate Philly. So basically what <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with is I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with Atlanta. I, that's my pick for that. I, I, that's the one I got, Atlanta. I don't see Philly, like you said. Like you said, Philly's a rebuilding team. They're probably about two or three years away from actually having a great team again and then pushing for the playoffs. And I, and I believe right now that Atlanta, Matt Ryan, probably going to come out flying. And then as, as it usually happens, we'll see him kind of tailor off. And I bet you he becomes, like you said, 25, between 25 and 26, if he can stay healthy. Yeah. Garrison, do you think, uh, think Jalen Hurts is a, is a Q, QB1 or what? I think this will be his only year as a starter. I don't think he's that good. I think he's going to be, uh, he's going to be a backup after this season. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I guess we'll have to see after he this year. Throw the ball Give him one year. Yeah. They got Devontae Smith, who he worked with in Alabama too, right? So yeah. mm-hmm. I think you'll see a little connection there. I like how he scrambles, runs up, tucks it in, and runs the ball. So I don't know. I think Matt Ryan's a year or two away from retirement. Like, he doesn't have much left in him, fellas. Oh, yeah. Mm, and no, up there sure. in age. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I, think, I agree with that. Sorry, go ahead, Chris. I think that might be one of the top five worst teams in the NFL this year, Atlanta. I know Philly's supposed to be down there too, but you you guys picked them for your division. I think Flem did. For, for what? Philly for the division? Yeah. No, I, I took the took Cowboys. I, I, oh, I, did? I, okay. I took the Cowboys. I took, in my Cowboys jersey, I took the Washington football team because I think that those guys <laughs> are going to die. Those guys will look I might take I definitely did take Philly. No way. All right. Anyways, but yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. I don't know. I think it's, it's, a, those... to- it's a toss up. I, I'd take the three and a half with Philly. I don't know about the money line, but I definitely take the three and a half with Philly. Yeah. yeah that's field, good. Lose by a field goal. I take that. Yeah. That's, that's a good, that's a good point on that one. And yeah, that, that to me, like that's a, that's a game. It's not a sexy game. It's not a game that like I, I'm, I'm circling on the calendar and square next to be a good game. It's just a game. If I got nothing else on, that's a game I'll watch. For yeah. sure. Um, the next game, though, that I really want to talk about is the Pittsburgh Steelers versus Bills Mafia in Buffalo. What are we expecting out of that one, boys? Now, to me, I, 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 I want a live ISO cam on the parking lot from like 9 a.m. Saturday night or Saturday morning <laughs> all the way up till game time. That's what I want right there. I want I want ISO cam on that. I want reporters. I want ESP. And Fox, I want CNN out there. I want everybody giving me a minute by minute report on what's happening in the parking lot. That's what I want. Yeah, that's the big story of the week, too, is I want to see how Bill's Mafia is ready to roll here this week. I think I think they're gonna come up flying. And I'm a Bills fan here, but Jam, I'll just give you my pick. I do not think Buffalo covers the spread. I would take, I think it's at 6.5. I would definitely take six Pittsburgh plus 6.5 on that one. And that's coming from a Bills fan. Yeah, and I think Bill's Mafia will be going wild on Sunday morning in Orchard Park. I think what we can guarantee, so there'll be a lot of beers, maybe some broken bones, <laughs> and some broken tables too, eh, fellas? Yeah, that's what we Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is where if you have stock and plastic tables, it's going to go through the roof. Get your picks in now, guys. Get your Go buy your stock into the table, into the table placements, because in Buffalo, they're all getting smashed this weekend. Um, I got the Bills and a pick them uh, with the with the spread. I don't know. Is Big Ben, does he have another like good year in him? What's going on? Like, what are we doing here? Are we waiting for him to – why isn't he gone yet? What's going on? Does he have one year left? Like, I'm not too sure on what we're looking at here with Pittsburgh. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Ben's kind of one of those guys where he's he's to the point where you could replace him with someone better. I think I don't. I don't know. If Pittsburgh's willing to do that. He's kind of the guy that if he wants to be around, it seems like he's going to stay there. He can still pass the ball. I don't know. Well, he can still make good decisions, right? He can still make good reads, good decision with his arms. Um, you know, whether you can find someone better and more athletic, I almost guarantee you could. So. I, I think Pittsburgh's got to move off Big Ben. I don't think he's going to be consistent enough over a 17-game season or just have the longevity in him. He's too old. He's been hurt too many times. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 this will be the last year for Big Ben, I think. And I, I have to agree with Fleming, too, yeah. It's going to no. be the last – probably last year or next year will be the last year. And then Mason Rudolph might play a year oh, as sure. a starter, I think. they got to draft just to get, right now. Just, just to, to get, get a draft time. pick. I don't know. No, I think you let. I, I think, and I'm with Chris on this one. I think you let him take. You let you, you let Mason take it. Let him. Hopefully, he's not a good quarterback. You can get yourself a top two up two or three pick, and then you get a quarterback there, and you kind of go, "Thank you for making us horrible." And now we're going to move on, and we're going to uh, pick it up. But I honestly think that coming towards the end, if if Pittsburgh's in it at all, which I don't think they will be, they'll be around, but I don't think they'll be in it. If you see it, I think you'll see Big Ben resting a few games. Like he'll be he'll be playing it gets a little bit of a lead. Okay, come on out, and then we're gonna kind of rest you because yeah. you're gonna need him. If you can make the playoffs in that division, go ahead and do it. But I mean, it's gonna be a hard it's gonna be hard pressed. And I think this will be Big Ben's last year. And I think we'll know halfway through the season if it's gonna be a farewell tour. And if it is, we got to give the guy all the respect and love he gets. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I just didn't want I wouldn't want to be in a bathroom with him. But we'll give him all the love and respect, and we'll send him on his way. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah or, or on a motorcycle with him, one or the other. <laughs> well, dude, the guy's head's the guy's head's my size. He literally took out a car. He just she <laughs> rode he rode off a transport with his massive head. Yeah, a concussion. No, the fuck the truck retired. That's exactly <laughs> what happened with Roethlisberger. Um Garrison, okay, what were you on the spread? Were you were you would you take Buffalo or uh, Pittsburgh with the spread? Uh, such a big number. It's a huge we number. Just don't know about the like two good teams. Yeah. Najee Harris for the Steelers. They had a little run game. I'll just – I'll go ahead and sell it right now. So, we're doing the, uh, the the tier level for picks. If we're taking our top pick of the week, minus Pittsburgh plus 6.5, and that's coming from a Bills fan, I think Pittsburgh can be able to throw the ball on Buffalo. And Buffalo may win, but it's going to be a rare situation where Buffalo wins by by a touchdown in that spot to me. So, give me give me Pittsburgh plus 6.5 for sure. I, I like it, and I, I like the over – over 48 and a half. I think that's only, that's only what it is 48 and a half. 48 and a half. Oh man, that's definite over then. That's like a 55 to me. I that's love easy. It. Yes. That's easy money right there. Take the over, folks. You heard it here. Take the over. Let's get that done for sure on that game. Um, now, uh, follow up between the, uh, another team I'm, I'm a little confused on. Let's go with the Chicago Bears and LA Rams. I was almost going to call them the St. Louis Rams because in my heart, they're still the St. Louis Rams. But the LA Rams versus Chicago. What are you guys? What are you guys thinking there? That's kind of interesting with the little uh, the, the little ginger that I hope breaks his hip. <laughs> what do you guys? Uh, yeah. What do you guys? What do you guys? Me, like I'm gonna, I don't know. I think that's a. I think that's a Matthew Stafford in the Rams all day long for me. I think uh, these first few games in Chicago are going to be key. But if they're going with Andy Dalton, Matthew Stafford's the better quarterback in that matchup. So uh, I would take the Rams. I'd probably take the Rams by a touchdown. Let me just let me just rewind a little bit. I'm sorry, guys. That's the Sunday nighter. I didn't want to jump right into it, but I kind of seen it and I got a little excited because I wanted to talk about the Sunday nighter. That's on me, guys. Um, so the Sunday nighter, the Rams versus Chicago in LA. Flam, you're taking you're taking the Rams. I think I'm I'm taking the Rams all day. I, I see that I don't see the Bears being that good this year on Sunday. And for the first Sunday night football game, I think it's gonna be a bit of a I think it's gonna be a bit of a wash. I think that the Rams are gonna go in and run all over them. Now I think it'll be a blowout. I think it'll be the only blowout on the Sunday night, uh, from what I can see in the schedule so far. This so far, I think that's going to be the only blowout we I possibly see. Yeah, uh, I don't know about that. Uh, I kind of see the Bears covering I knew seven and a half is a lot for the first game of the year. I think Stafford has to get used to that offense, but I do see Stafford putting up big numbers. I do like the Rams straight up, but if I had to choose. I'd probably take the Bears with the, the seven and a half. Um, you just want to see Andy Dalton keep playing, don't you? You love him. I, you don't I, want to see uh, any Justin Fields, do you? <laughs> you won't see Justin Fields till about week seven, probably. 
I'll take you're the under. Week, you're saying week seven. Do you want to oh, wanna make a wow. wanna make a bet on that and I'll take the under? I'll even give you I'll give you six. Game six. I say we see Justin Field by the sixth game of the year. We'll talk later. But anyways, <laughs> Stafford too facing the Bears. The Bears kind of know what they're getting with Stafford being from the division. True. So, yeah. And the uh, the Bears took out Stafford. I think it was in his rookie year, if I'm not mistaken, on that one. I think it was the Bears defense that ate him alive. And uh, but I don't think right now the Bears are anything as they were uh, 12 years ago. So I, I yet again, I'm going Rams. I'm taking Rams on the spread. I'm taking Rams everything. And I'm honestly hoping that somebody just breaks Andy Dalton's old man hip. That's all <laughs> I'm asking for. Get the Red Rocket out of there. Um, as we're done that one now. Um, so let's go to the game I wanted to cover, but uh, I got too excited when I looked at my sheet. Um, let's jump into a, a game that Arizona and Tennessee. This is a pickup. Like, I don't know what you guys want to, we guys got to want to get into. Well, it's a three, <laughs> but so I know who Flem's going to choose here. <laughs> and I know Just who from this. Too. Just from it, yeah, I know you do. So, anyways, I just think newcomer JJ Watt, Ch- Chandler Jones can stop uh, Derrick Henry in the run game. Uh, Titans lost their offensive coordinator and Arthur Smith to Atlanta, like everyone knows. So, I think Tannen has a bit of time uh, to learn a new scheme. And is AJ Brown healthy? How healthy is Julio Jones? And then on the other side of the football, you got you got um, Murray, who I think uh, he'll have tons of receivers and Hopkins, Green, Kirk, Rondo Moore. Um, so I just see the Cardinals being too much. I just – and Tennessee doesn't really have a defense. So I think the Cardinals will be able to score. So I probably – if I had to choose something, I'd take the over – and then the Cardinals plus three and the Cardinals money line and the Cardinals money line. So there you go. Yeah. No, I don't mind that. Honestly, I thought Arizona would cover. If you made me pick, I would take Tennessee to win just cause I don't know. I can't, I can't really pass up on it, but I agree that Arizona gives Tennessee problems right where they can't have them. So Tennessee has no D line. They have no pass rush whatsoever. If you don't get pressure on Kyler Murray, and let him sit in the pocket. You make an average passer, a really good passer. So in this game, I would say uh, – I, w- I would probably say Arizona covers the three. I wouldn't take the money line, but uh, I don't know. If you're going to give me three points, I think that easily can somehow be, you know, a 24-23 game or, or a two-point game. So, if you made me pick, I would definitely take uh, – like in the pickums, I'm taking I – w- I would take the plus. I would take plus, plus three with Arizona. Okay, and I'm just going to say this now. I'm just picking Tennessee to win. That's yeah. it. it. At three points, you know what, guys, that to me is a pick them. Three points, that's, no. that's, that's nothing. Yeah, right? well, I, so, when I was handicapping the game, I thought it pretty easily could be a pick them either way. Like, it's a 50-50 yeah. game to me, yeah. And I, I'm going to go the home team on that one. That's, that's what I'm going to do, and I think I honestly think Tennessee's going to take it. And I, it, Hopefully it's a close game. I hope that's a good game, and I, I can't wait to watch it. I'm pretty stoked to watch it and see what these guys have to do. Yeah, so a lot of scoring. I mean, I'm yeah. curious to see how Tennessee's just going to be, like, adapt as a team. <laughs> They've always been that run-first heavy team with, uh, you know, handed off to Henry 300 times, 400 times on the year. Now they add Julio, and they got A.J. Brown. They, they've now got that passing offense they haven't had in a long time. So this is uh, this is Tennessee's chance. I'm curious how it's going to develop this year. All right, yeah. I, I see a lot more picks coming for Tannehill in this year, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, back to like his old top- days. Back <laughs> to his old days with the Dolphins. Yeah, he's not a top 10 quarterback, that's for sure. He's decent, but yeah. We'll, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, take the points. Take the points. Perfect, guys. I'm looking right now at uh, the 49ers and the Lions uh, to open it up, what are we thinking, guys? One o'clock game here. Is that a one o'clock uh, game for me? Oh, it yeah. is a one o'clock game. Yep. <laughs> me, I JM. I, I think that's an easy 49ers game. I don't really see how. Uh, I don't know. The Lions are st- the Lions are still rebuilding. I just don't see how uh, Jimmy G is going to start. Uh, yeah, I would even take the points. I think it's seven and a half. I think I'm just going to take San Francisco. They're the better team. Detroit's rebuilding, and it's not their time yet. Yeah, I uh, I think Detroit's going to be the worst team in the league. Like they got a lot of question marks. Uh, their number one receiver, Tyrell Williams. Tell me who who the hell is that, really? And Swift's, you hurt, guys, right? Swift's hurt at running back. Yeah, they're, they're in trouble. So, Dude, I, they're I, I, in a lot of trouble. So, And the 49ers, I think, are going to be close to winning that division with the Rams. 
they're going to be fighting it out. I think that defense is going to be back to normal with Nick Bosa. So I see, yeah, I, I see a 49ers win and that probably 10 to 14 point win. Yeah. The Niners are going to win. I know that. And uh, the uh, annoying Niner fans that I have, it's my friends are all dicks. Cause I'm playing the bucks tonight and we've got the <laughs> Niners playing the Detroit lions. They're just going to run all over them. That's all it's going to be. It'll be uh, the second half or second half will be practice basically. Throw the guys out, get them some experience, get them the crowd. That's about it to me. So I think we're all on it. I think, I think, the is that a, is that a guarantee? Is that a lock? Is is San Fran the lock of the week? Is that the besides the Cowboy game on the Thursday night? Is San Francisco the lock of the week? You think? Jam, there's never a lock, never a lock. <laughs> I understand, but, but if you if you if, if you you're in a suicide man, if you're in a suicide pool, yeah. and the team just had to win, San Fran would probably be the lock of the week. I I would say, right, Flem. Yeah, I would probably say that. We should almost that do a board. suicide pool where you got to you got to take a pick 'em, but you also got to take a spread every week. Those yeah. are the best yeah. ones. Are that's, like that, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm. And another is. point about that, San Fran lines is San Fran gets to see Jared Goff again, and he they used to see him twice a year. Mm-hmm. So I think they feast on him. Yeah, they know Two, what three he has picks. to offer. So it's yeah, yeah. That, that was a wrap for me. Yeah, exactly. While we're in the South, we might as well talk about the LA Chargers and the Washington football team. Uh, another one o'clock game here, boys. Uh, what are we liking out of here out of the Chargers and Washington? And who do you guys have? So I've yeah. been going back. Sorry, Flam, go ahead. No, you go, you go. I want to see what you guys so have. I've been going back and forth on this game. I just, I don't know. I love the new head coach, Brendan Saley. He's the leading candidate for coach of the year. That's what all the experts like. Uh, start the season You're on the an road. Expert against... now, Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not talking about me. I'm talking about <laughs> others. But anyways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Chargers finally look healthy. Mind you, now Eckler could be out possibly. So that's a big loss for them. So then you just have that one of the best D lines just stacking up, getting after he or Justin Hebert, I think. And I, I have to say Washington wins. I don't know. You hold a gun to my head. I'm going to say Washington that just cause home. I don't, I don't yeah, know. I, I would just check in Eckler's, uh, Eckler's injury report. So he hasn't practiced last two days. That's pretty much a sign, especially with a hamstring this early. I'd say he's out. If Eckler's out, that's an easy, uh, that's an easy Washington. I think the line is minus one. I would take Washington up to two and a half, maybe even At three. Home, so yeah, yeah. yeah if Eckler's out for sure. Washington, I would pound Washington either way though. I just think, they got the they got the better defense in this one. Uh, Tannehill is probably comparable to uh, to Herbert right now. You know, I don't think you know maybe not same level, but I mean, I think the journeyman can keep up with the kid. And uh, I'll take the defense. I'll take Washington. Yeah, I'm gonna go with you guys. I'll, I'll follow everybody else on this one. I'll be the I'll be the loser of the group. I'll follow <laughs> you guys. I'm gonna say the Washington football team for sure gets their first win. And uh, I honestly think that they're not going to. Uh, I don't think when they get the first win, the Cowboys will be chasing them the whole way. I don't think that Washington will look back, but Washington's going to be off to a good start for sure. So that's yeah, it. Everybody's on, everybody's on Washington. It'll be a good defensive game, I think. You'll get Chase Young. You'll get Joey Bose on the other side. I think defensively it'll be a dandy. Yeah. Don't forget Dirt, uh, Darwin James is back. Anyways. A lot, it's of, gonna, a lot of talent between two teams that you know aren't considered you know really even serious contenders at all. So a lot of talent in the game, especially on the defensive side for sure. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked on it. Okay, guys, I got next. I got Seattle <laughs> at Indianapolis. Um, yet again, close spread on this one, guys. Uh, what do you guys have? And I, I got uh, I got some little bit of comments here on this one. So, what do you guys got going here that this week on the Seattle and Indianapolis one? Jam, why don't you lead on this one? You got comments on it. Go for it. This is a, well. This is so I, I, this was I was I was flipping back and forth. So this is the guys that work kind of put me in a pool. And I had Indy to win because it was it was pretty close. And I'm thinking at home with the crowd not being at home for a while. I figured I would have given it to Indy. But then you start thinking about the you start thinking about the Seahawks, and they're always in it, it seems. And to me, I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna have to go and say I'm just gonna go Seattle. I, I switched from Indianapolis to Seattle, and I think that Seattle's going to uh, going to win that game. Uh, and it'll be a close game, though. I think it'll be one of the closer ones. I think it'll be a last-minute field goal by either team. I, I, I can't say anything else other than that. That's kind of what life with Seattle's like. It's always a three-point game. It's always going to be close at the end. So, 
Yeah, I would take Seattle. I would take Seattle by, you know, one or two points. I, I probably wouldn't even take a plus three. But, uh, yeah, I think Seattle wins a game. Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree. I, you can't trust Carson once. No. I do like him in, in the new system there with uh, the head coach that he was in Philly. So, I do like that. See what happens there. But DK Metcalf's going to have a massive year. Chris Carson's healthy. Uh, I don't know. It might be high scoring too, but the better D is Indy. I, I think for sure. It's hundred percent Indy better D. Yeah. Seattle's lost a lot. I don't know. I just don't Carson Wentz. Uh, he doesn't impress me at all whatsoever. So I don't know. Russell Wilson's probably been doing a lot more, uh, physical, uh, workouts with Sierra and whatnot, you know, that's more cardio than it is physical boys. We know that. <laughs> I mean, like I find my, yeah, if I'm him, I basically, the minute I married her, I'd probably retire anyways, as I'd be way <laughs> too busy to even <laughs> contemplate using my hands. But I mean, I would probably retire if I had Sierra, but yet again, I'm sitting in my basement right now looking like a poor man's Andy Reed. So, I mean, what do I know? And uh, yeah, so good for him. And uh, we'll go from there, I guess. All right, guys. I think you're much better looking than Andy Reid, bud. Oh, I don't know. I like the I like the walrus type mustache. <laughs> yeah. oh, I like that. I mean, you know, a Super Bowl, <laughs> no, yeah, it's true. Yeah. Well, that's all. And you know, I like my poutine cheeseburgers. So I mean, hey, we'll see what happens, right? Now, next, I got those goddamn Jets versus the uh, versus Carolina, the Panthers. Uh, who do you guys like in this one? So yeah, I think I almost guarantee we're going to be often on this one, Garrison. So I'm going to take the Panthers. I think uh, I don't think Zach Wilson's all he's made out to be. Uh, yeah, give me give me the Panthers. I don't know. I just think I think CMC is too much. They got too much on uh, on offense with DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. So I think that's an easy Panthers. I don't think the Jets have the pieces to get it done there. So uh, I think Garrison will probably uh, be the awesome. I would not even take the points. I think the points spreads four. I would take Carolina minus four. Uh, I I agree with you actually. Fun. Really? Yeah, I like Sam Darnell. I think he's going to bring big things to uh, Carolina offense. Uh, and Chris McCaffrey's healthy again, so that's big, big for that offense. That's the question mark coming uh, to the year is, is how CMC, is he going to be able to handle that workload he was for? Because he was like a, on the field 95% of the time type of guy. Is he going to be that same guy? Or are they going to, are they going to dial his usage back right now? I think, I think he's probably going back to like the, you know, the 1A kind of guy where he sees 70% of the snaps and maybe doesn't see 35 touches a game anymore. I, yeah, I, I think when they don't want to use them uh, for the run, so to block, I think they'll uh, use a different back there. Yeah, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say they're gonna let them run. I, I I've got I've got the Panthers on this one too. You gotta let you gotta let big dogs eat, man. You, you, the guy's good at, at turning up. Just let him go. Give him the ball. Let him go. So I think so. That, I, so I, I do go. think Zach Wilson has a big year. Guy looks like he should be in on the coverage GQ. Just look at him. Good looking, dude. Anyways, question for you boys. BYU, Mormon school, can't have sex. You think that guy fucks or what? <laughs> what are the odds, Garrison? <laughs> oh, fuck. Think of it. Of course he does. Oh, my God. Of course Just he the does. People that would line, the women line up for him. Man. What's the uh, what's the old saying? Like if you if you tell someone they can't do it, they're probably more likely to do it. So if you're that's probably just like a big orgy the whole time in that school. They get kicked out of the church though, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was gonna say, yeah, if we haven't kicked a priest out of a church yet, I don't. If we haven't kicked a priest out of a church. Yeah. I don't know. If we're gonna kick a kid out for banging cheerleaders, line them up and knock them down. That's yeah. exactly what I would be doing. Every touchdown, I got a new one. That's it, man. That's all it is. <laughs> so I'd be I'd be dancing all over. So, yeah, I, does he fuck? Come on now. The priest God probably already had his way with him anyway when he was a kid, so. Wow. That, that's going <laughs> to play into his performance. I'm just wondering. Oh, are, you thinking, are you thinking he got out of the school, got to the NFL, signed his deal, and now he's too tired to play? He lost that edge. Are you saying he lost the edge? You know, <laughs> roll over Sunday morning, might have to kick someone out of bed. You never know. And just <laughs> – you know, but, get there, hung over, you know, had a little too many tequila shots. But, like, he's not a, he's not an average guy from Canada where, like, you roll over, you're like, what the fuck did I do last night? He rolls over, he's like, 
He rolls over to his right. He's like, holy fuck, not bad. Then he looks to his left. He's like, fucking A. And then he looks down to the south and goes, even better. Like, there's no way this guy's, this guy's, this guy's wheeling at 15s. We're looking here like, oh, that, that girl's at 10. He goes, no, that's a, that's a two to me. Like, like a 10 to us is a two to him. So, I mean, to me, this guy's rolling in, in, in everything you possibly could want in a job. That's what I teach my son. Just throw a football. You don't have to be good. Just throw one, man. That's it. And yeah. let's just get you wheeling. That's all you got to do. And you'll have stories <laughs> for the rest of your life. I think he's, I think he's going to do, uh, I think he's going to do fine. He might be a little too tired though. He honestly might be, or his cardio is going to be through the roof. One of the two, it's going to be either way, right? Well, I hope his cardio is through the roof because they're going to get about 15 sacks on him with that O-line there in, uh, in, in New York. So it's going to be a fun oh. day for him. I think it's going to be a rude awakening to the NFL for the kid. All right, boys. Jackson, let's go to the the rookie of the year. Jacksonville at Houston Texans. Who do you guys like on that one? Uh, for me, that's an easy one. I'll take I'll take Jacksonville. I think the line's set perfectly at three. If you made me pick, I would take Jacksonville minus three. But uh, I just don't think Houston brings it up. They're starting Tyrod Taylor this week. Uh, as a Buffalo fan, I was a big Tyrod fan. He won me def- definitely won me some money in fantasy back in the day with all his uh, his scrambles running for touchdown, but. He's getting older. He's not going to be any faster. His, his biggest thing was never throwing the ball. He's more a leg guy. So, I don't know. I just think, you know, his time's probably come where he's definitely not uh, not a starting quarterback anymore. I think Trevor Lawrence is just a better option at quarterback. So, give me the Jags, and I'll take minus three, too. Yeah, and uh, I can make one guarantee in this game is this game will not be on my TV at any point. <laughs> I there's no, sure. such, there's no such thing as a guarantee <laughs> in, on Sundays. <laughs> Oh, that's a guarantee for sure, JM. <laughs> Jacksonville is going to be starting the Golden Boy, JM's rookie boy, main crush, Trevor Lawrence. So he'll get his first first kick at the cat. Uh, I, I don't know. This one's tough. I think both these teams are going to be bad this year. But Houston just keep giving away whatever on defense. They just got rid of Roby and – yeah. Whoever else, they just, I think, they're going to use that three backs with David Johnson, Mark Ingram, and uh, Lindsey. So, I think they just pound the ball, waste the clock. I think a lot of boring games, yeah. they'll lose definitely they're probably 13-14. Yeah. yeah, they're trying to win like 17-14 at, like, at worst. And they have no defense at all. Like, you can no. throw the ball on Houston all day long. It doesn't even matter who you are. So yeah, that's why I'll take the Jags in that one. Is where, where where do we see where do we see Houston finishing? Like in the league, are, is he are they bottom oh, five? seventeen. You can't. I'll fucking take the over on. No, over on that. <laughs> they won't uh, win a game this year. They're so bad. They're going to be so horrible. With like, is Deshaun Watson going to play or not? That's the question. Like if three, Deshaun three Watson four, play, three and fourteen. Yeah, they where might beat Tennessee one week. That's that's. Four, the, Four and thirteen. I don't know. If the, line I think the set, lines are going to be just as bad. If the line was set at one and a half, I would take the under. The only thing with that is they play in such a shitty division, though. I know. So they, they might yeah, yeah. they like they might win this game, and then for sure, yeah, there's yeah. one. The, win, the so. Jags are yeah. The Jags are a 50, 50 You know, sixty forty at worst. The Jags are favorites. So James, or go to Jack. James writing that down. He's gonna he's gonna hold me to that when they win like six games this year. Oh yeah, ex- <laughs> oh exactly. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, yeah. So I mean, I don't know, man. I, I'm a, I'm a fan of Trevor Lawrence. So like I said, he's my man crush out there. So I, I, I'm gonna pick Jacksonville on that one. That's a pretty easy way to go. Um, so that's kind of where I, that's where I'm looking at on that one, guys. Um, that one might that one probably be on my TV. Probably gonna guarantee it's gonna be on my TV. Why? Because I like I, I like uh, quarterbacks and I like a sexy story once in a while. Oh, right, you're doing, um, you're doing well, like JM. You got four TVs down there in that basement, bud. So it's gonna be on one of the uh, TVs. Yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah, I tell the wife goes upstairs, and I had a fifth one because the one in the living room is gone upstairs, and then she's yeah. down here <laughs> screaming at me, and I'm getting a divorce, <laughs> and I'm shooting from Flem's goddamn garage next week because I need a place to stay. Yeah, and then you only have two and a half TVs. Just remember that, JM. Two and a half. Not, not yeah, five. Exactly. Not five anymore. Half. No. Half would be hers. No, Jay. You'd yeah. only end up with two. Exactly. You'd only end up with two. No, I'd give it all the word. I'd I'd restart from scratch. <laughs> I'd go to I, I'd go to work and help out with those uh, for sure. Um, yeah. So uh, what I what I want to do now, guys? I want to take a little reset here. Uh, uh, 
Flem, I want like to talk about. Uh, let's let's go with the paid against sports, paid forward sports. Yes, what is going on? What's going on with uh, paid forward sports? I've seen a lot of posts out there, and I want to know what is going on. How do I get myself on a vacation? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, pay forward sports is a partner with or a sponsor of the podcast. So, they are, I guess, the uh, the big brother company to Boot Club Sports. So, pay forward sports runs uh, sporting events for ad- mostly adults but kids, and then. They also have a, uh, a fund, which they, uh, with part of the proceeds from all the events, they give into the Pay Forward Sports Fund, which helps get local underprivileged kids into sports. So they're doing tons of stuff. So coming up in October, uh, the second weekend of October, October 9th, it's the Las Vegas Caesars Palace Invitational at Trillium Woods. It's a golf tournament, four-man scramble, $900 per team. Uh, the winner of that gets a trip for uh, all four guys to Caesars Palace. And then there's also a uh, vac- uh, vacation draw to the Dominican Republic. So, uh, it's a fill the suitcase raffle. Whoever wins at the end of the day on October 9th is going to win a trip for two to the Dominican, five star, all inclusive. And then also, there's a hole in one contest at the tournament for a trip to Mexico, another five star resort. And then, uh, Jam, after that, the weekend after, October 16th, we have a hockey tournament three on three at the World Elite Training Center in Belleville. So, uh, three on three ice hockey, you can get yourself into that as well. Uh, send us an email, pay it forward sports at hotmail.com or check us out on Facebook uh, for all the details. All right, guys, I want to throw in a little thing in there with the World Elite Sports. If you've never been to that facility, guys, swing on it. It's at 199 Bell Boulevard. It's on the end. I want you guys to go in there. They have a lot of crazy stuff. They are amazing. They have an amazing staff. They've got a three-on-three rink. They've got, they've got all kinds of cool fitness facility in there to, get, to help you out as well. Uh, go and see uh, Newberry. Chris Newberry's down there, former Maple Leaf. Um, He's also doing training down there as well. So bring your kids down there. Go see them. Go just check it out, guys. Stop in and check it out and see what Belleville has to offer you for training. I think you guys will be amazed. Uh, World World Elite is such an awesome place. We go there for our pickup hockey like every week, too. And, yeah, it's a great place. Like, they got got noobs and Randy Rowe and old Belleville Bulls as well. So if you uh, reminisce about the Belleville Bulls back in the day in the OHL championship run, uh, all those guys are hanging around there right now training the next, uh, you know, the future athletes of the city. So it's a great spot. Check them out for sure, Jam. Yeah, definitely stop in there, guys. Don't forget, stop in at Jack Cook's Pub as well for great wings and uh, and a cold beer. And I literally just watched Tom Brady throw his first pick of the season to my Dallas Cowboys, so I will uh, I'll have a little bit of a drink to that. Now, guys, let's just jump back right into the action here, as we are in a bit of a roll. Uh, what was the last team we covered? Was it Minnesota and Cincinnati? Is that the last team we covered? No, we did uh, That's Houston. Right. That's the one we're on next. Okay. We are here at the Vikings and Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, who do you guys like on this one? Go ahead, yeah. So let's start. Joe Burrow makes his long-awaited uh, return from the ACL-MCL surgery. So I don't see things getting much better for Joe with that offensive line. He does have a lot of weapons, but he just needs the time to get the ball out. Uh, I think since he may be able to get some stops against the Vikings, uh, I I don't know. This one's a tough one, too. I kind of think a Cincy upset, but give me Minnesota. I'll just take Minnesota to win. We're on different pages on this one, buddy. I'm taking I'm taking Joe Burrow all day long here, and I'm going to say for the simple fact that Joe Burrow is a better quarterback than Kirk Cousin. Like, that's just a fact at this point. Kirk Cousin, just a journeyman. He's not going to take a team to the next level. So uh, I'm going to take the better quarterback. I think the sp- it's a spread. It's minus three. I would definitely take the Bengals plus three. I'd probably even take Bengals money line at this point, and uh, I think that's going to be on some of my tickets this week too. So, like, yeah, I'd say that's probably going to be my uh, – that would be my second or third bet after Pittsburgh this week is uh, – Give me the Bengals. They're just, they're just, I don't know. I don't think the Vikings do enough well, but run the ball. Like, sure, they'll run the ball. Maybe, maybe Dalvin Cook gets a couple of touchdowns, but uh, I think Joe Burrow puts up at least four. So, you know, 31 28 since he probably four, four, four yeah. yards, four. maybe four yards, not <laughs> touch. You're talking touchdowns or yards, son. Like, are you even drinking phlegm? Are you on some sort of adhesive? Phlegm. Everything. Phlegm. But that doesn't, Minnesota's, Minnesota's a horrible secondary. They phlegm. don't rush 20, the passer. I'll put it. Three and a half, and I'll take the under. So, what you want the Vikings for three and a half? No, I no, won't. I'll take oh, three I, I, just need, I mean, since he scores four touchdowns, like I think okay. since he okay. scores four, I, I would say he throws four in, but Joe Mixon's gonna get Mixon's gonna get like man, Mixon's a top 10, 15 yeah, yeah. in the league. I think, uh, I think 31 28, I think 31 is an easy number for the Bengals, and I don't think Minnesota can get there. 
I think there'll be uh, a lot of scoring. I do agree with that. Yeah. No, I think the Bengals for sure. I'm going Minnesota on this one. I I think Joe Burrow is already washed up. I think with that injury, I think he's coming back. That line, everything about Cincinnati, they've got a shitty facility. They've got shitty fans. they got a (laughs) shitty owner. Like, literally, because of you, I got stuck with fucking Andy Dalton. I hope Cincinnati burns. I'm not going to lie to you. If you wouldn't have drafted him, I wouldn't have got stuck with him. So I hope Cincinnati burns. All right, boys, moving right along here. Let's go to uh, Denver and the Giants. The New York Giants. Who do you guys like in that one? And so many mediocre teams play each other this week. Like, it's just this is another weird one where it probably won't be on your TV. Uh, Saquon Barkley's coming back. If you made me – I don't know. I'm not really interested in this game. If you made me pick, I would take the Giants plus three. Uh, I wouldn't – I probably won't be betting it, though. I won't be watching it. But, uh, yeah, if, you, if you're degenerate like Garrison, you want in, I would take plus three on the Giants. Yeah, I actually would watch this game. <laughs> I, I think it's going to be a good one. I think uh, with Barkley coming back, uh, Galladay, they also added another tight end, Rudolph, to receiving core. I don't know. Denver has the deepest CBs in the NFL. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, fourth team in three years. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm going to take the Giants at home. I just yeah. because oh, wow. I like who's, who's better, Daniel Jones or Teddy Bridgewater? Daniel Jones, probably. Like da- Daniel Jones. Yeah, not enough foot he, race. Throwing the ball. <laughs> not enough foot race. I'll tell you that right now. But um, I do like coach of the year, Joe Judge, coming from the Giants. Hey, <laughs> fun? Yeah, got some money down on that one, bud. Little yeah. sprinkle. I've seen that. I'm gonna. Go, I'm just gonna go with Denver. I just like Denver. I'm a fan of Denver, and I hate the Giants. I really, honestly do. I'm just not a fan of the Giants, and I, I, I don't think the Giants have it. But with such a close line, it could go any way, guys. Honestly, I'm not betting with my heart on this one. I just think yeah. Denver's gonna do it. But for the spread, I think I'm gonna take. The, I would take the Giants. I think Denver's gonna take it. But for the spread, I take the Giants on that one because they're at home too. And if yeah. it's that close, you got to give it to the home team. Like I said, the fans—you don't know what the fans are going to what fans are going to come out, right? So that's what we're hoping for on that one. So that's I love, I, I'm okay I love with to see the fans in the crowd, though. I'm so excited to see all the fans this week. It's just going to be something different for football. Like it, you can pump in all the fake noise you want, but it's going to be great to have it back. I think. Exactly. At that point, I, I'm just stoked to see fans. That's all I want. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm going to I'm going to tune into the Buffalo game because the the Bills Mafia. I'm not even a Bills fan. I just I I have a love for the Mafia. I don't know why. I, I've never loved a fan base the way I love the Bills Mafia. I love you guys, and I think you guys are going to get some love. So I just want to watch fans. That's all I want to do. So Sunday, I'll be in the basement. I'll be watching my TV, my chicken wings, uh, you know, and I'm going to just be drinking pints and having a good time. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, oh boy. Okay, I'm down the pipe next. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I want to go with Miami versus the Pats. What do you guys like on this one? Now, this one has got me. Let me just jump in here, boys. This one, I'm going I'm going to go with the Pats on this one. Um, I should never go with the Pats against Miami. We all know this. <laughs> it's not it's never good for the Pats, but I'm not going to lie to you. I think Belichick knows what he's got. He spent some money. I think the guys are pretty pumped up to be in, to be there. They're back at home. I have no problems with uh, with going to go with the Pats on this one uh, all day. What do you guys what are you guys thinking out there? Yeah. Yeah, uh, battle of former Crimson Crimson Tide, Roll Tide, Roll quarterbacks. Uh, Tua, I think, has tons of weapons. Parker, Waddell, Fuller. Uh, I think he's able to scramble out of the pocket, and that will help against that suffocating D for the Patriots. Uh, but Miami's uh, D is no joke either. Uh, I uh, Bill went out and grabbed uh, – Smith and uh, Hunter Henry at tight end. Didn't he get so Aguilar too? Yeah, and so I think he'll kind of uh, go back to when they used to use Gronk and Hernandez, kind of the two tight end system. Oh, yeah. yeah, just hanging around out there in the flats. Yeah, yeah, and so I don't know. A lot of hype on this rookie quarterback. I think there'll be a little bit of pressure on him. Uh, two already beat the Pats last year. I think that was Week 15. I. Th- if if I'm not mistaken, not too, yeah, I think week 15. Anyways, 
I like Miami to cover. I actually like Miami to win too. So. I, I, I'm not. I'm not too sure what Belichick's doing right now. I think he's drinking a little bit of gasoline. I think I would have put. I would. I wouldn't have cut Cam until week two. I'm um, looking at it now. I'm looking at it. You're putting a rookie quarterback in where your fans haven't been in the stadium for a year. Um, following Tom Brady. Tom Brady's coming off a Super Bowl. That's a lot of pressure for a young man. Can he handle it? Do you think he can handle it? Uh, anyone's better than Cam at this point. Well, Cam can't I mean, throw the ball worth past 10 yards. So, anyways, go so ahead. That's, that, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at, right? Flem, what are you thinking about this poor kid? Oh, yeah. I, I think this is a tough game for me. It's probably a pass. Uh, I don't know. If you made me pick, I would take – if it's at two and a half – I would take New England just because I think Belichick, Belichick's worth three points. I think it's a pick em game and Belichick's worth the extra points. So I'm not saying New England's going to be good this year. I agree. Cam Newton is not going to play another down at quarterback. He does not, he hasn't had the arm strength for three years at this point. So does uh, somebody yeah. take a gamble on him though? Does somebody, let's just talk Cam Newton. Does somebody take a gamble on him that maybe a little iffy? Like, do you see a team out there that's looking going, shit, you know what? Bring us back, give us Cam Newton, even in a backup role. Like, do you think there's a team out there that takes him? If I'm Harbaugh, Harbaugh in, uh, for Baltimore, I bring him in, put him in running back, just so he just gets crushed. <laughs> like, <laughs> here you go. You can have the ball. Do what you want. I bring him say, like, whatever. it's a wildcat formation. You know, you stand over here, and then all of a sudden he gets a pitch, and he goes, I'm fucked, and just whoever, gets crushed. Whoever the Baltimore running back is, that's a guaranteed torn ACL within, like, the first two weeks, so – I mean, so Gus, yeah, they Gus, got that. Gus Bus went down today, right? Gus Edwards went down today to the torn ACL. Dobbins got a torn ACL. So, yeah, I don't think anyone gives Newton a chance. I don't think it's even an option. I mean, I think it's – I'm no, I'm not a, an expert quarterback evaluator, but I can see that guy's wash, man. Like, he just does not have the arm strength to even play high school quarterback, apparently. Like, you know, sure, he, he can – you know, he's no longer to the point where he can just run guys over. You know, he was, he was a finisher when he ran the ball back in the day. Like, he'd take a six-yard run and lower shoulder and run over a guy and get up for more. He's not that same guy anymore. You know, that was a strength. He can't do that anymore. He was never a thrower. So, yeah, there's a big difference. though, when you're playing against a 200 pound lineman in the, in college compared to a 400 pound lineman in the NFL, who's yeah. hungry and gets paid millions of dollars to do his job. Yeah. He did. So, I mean, dom- he dominated college. So it's, oh, yeah. it's almost like space jam. Like the monsters came and took his, like everything. Like, you can't throw the ball <laughs> at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyways. All right, boys, let's wrap up Sunday with the game I really want to talk about. The Green Bay Packers at the New Orleans Saints. Who do you guys have? And tell me why. I'm interested to know what you guys are thinking. <laughs> well, this, is a, this is a really tough one for me. I don't know. Garris, do you have, like, a strong opinion you want to go on it? Or? I think this is the game of the week for me, I think. Uh, Aaron Rodgers' long return from his little mini vacation holdout. Uh I don't know. No, is he, no sa- is he still sour from Lafleur choosing to kick a field goal? They lost two pieces in that old line. Uh, I don't see him putting up the numbers he did last year. Like they picked up Randall Cobb. I think he's pretty much at the end of his career too. He's Cam Newton, pretty much. <laughs> it's yeah, New Orleans Saints. They start with the W. Eaton quarterback from Florida State, Jameson <laughs> my, Winston, my MVP. Beating W's out there. <laughs> My MVP. Forty to one MVP. <laughs> who replaces Breeze after fifteen years? So and Michael Thomas is out. I just, I don't know. I think this is a tough one. I, I don't like this. I have to take Green Bay money line. If anything, to pick, but I like the under. I do like the under fifty. I yeah. I think Rodgers will be a bit behind, even though it's Aaron, yes, it's Aaron Rodgers, but I think the whole offense will be behind. Uh, and New Orleans does have a good defense, so that, that's the main thing. Is New Orleans got a really underrated defense and a really underrated defensive line, like uh, Cam Jordan up there. They can stop the run. They can get pressure on the quarterback. Uh, Marcus is Ro- Davenport. Yeah, is you know is Rodgers back one hundred percent? Who knows on that? But I do like the under in that one. I don't. I don't think I, the under is the key for me because I don't think New Orleans has the weapons to uh, to get the twenty five points. So, yeah, I'd take the under. Um, I I would I would honestly I would not if I had to lay very much juice I wouldn't take Green Bay money line just because I think oh I think New Orleans got like almost a fifty percent chance to win the game. Like I don't know. I just don't think Green Bay yeah. is the same team. Green Bay is not the same team that Bakhtiari. 
that guy's one of the, he's probably the second or third most important piece in that team. And, uh, and the center too, what was his name? Lindsay. Uh, those are two, yeah. like two, the two top five most important guys in the team. They've lost them. I would, I wouldn't bet it, but I would take, uh, I would take New Orleans money line just for the juice. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't bet it, but I, I do like the under. That's probably what I, yeah. The under is a good If look. I had to bet anything, I definitely take the under. Yeah. Bet the under's on, good look. So even in Jack, I think they're playing in Jacksonville. So the hot air, you never know. So yeah, anyways. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go New Orleans to win this one. Um, I think the defense, the New Orleans defense is going to come up flying. I think that if New Orleans can get to Rodgers early, I think he's going to mail it in. I think that Rodgers is kind of looking at his time off, enjoying Jeopardy, and he had all the background noise and stuff like that. You start getting hit as a quarterback, he may start thinking like, shit. Like, yeah. I wish I could have, I wish I could be answering something for a thousand right now. I think he, I, I think this first couple of games for Aaron Rodgers is going to set his, is going to set his thing. Who knows? Aaron Rodgers gets rocked the first couple weeks. He may just retire halfway through. Like he yeah. may just say, you know what? Honestly, I'm done guys. I'm done. Honestly, a guy like that, like to play quarterback, uh, to play professional football or play quarterback professional football, you have to be a hundred percent invested. So he may come back in thinking like, yeah, I'm invested. Like I can do this, but when you get hit in the mouth and you're like, oh, shit, do I really want, you know, is this really what I want to do? Like, if, if you're not 100% on point, if you're not as sharp as he can be every week, he he's older, too. He could be in trouble. I'm curious to see how this dynamic is going to play with, like, him, Lafleur, and, and the GM this year. Like, if they're on the one-yard line, are they going to be handed off to Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon all year? Is that going to make Rodgers mad? I'm so excited to see, like, the progression of this relationship through the year. I, I don't think Rodgers makes it through the year in Green Bay. I think something's going on, and I think – by the deadline, he might be uh, he might be shipped out of town to a team that needs a quarterback. So what do you say? What are you saying? Are you saying that by week six, he is a Dallas Cowboy? Is that what you're saying right now, Flem? I don't you know. Right now, he's a Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> yeah. He might wow. be a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. I don't know. <laughs> fuck him and Brady, and fuck Tom Brady. <laughs> I hate that guy so much. Yeah, I, I agree, Flem. All it takes is one, one little. Let's kick a field goal. He's gonna go nuts on the sidelines, mm-hmm. or like you know, see- what if what if you know what if one game you know he's got I don't know they run in for four touchdowns from the one and they don't give him a touchdown pass you know he's gonna sulk in the corner he's gonna be all mad him and Devontae will be over there with my fantasy team just kind of in the dump so I, no I bet you I bet you when Rogers came back said from thirty in I I'm calling the plays I what, bet you said that from thirty in I'm calling the plays because what if they move up. him well plus whatever, the draft picks for Jimmy G. He plays but one year in San but that plays the end of the year in San Fran. That would have already happened though. Like why does why didn't that happen to the draft? Like that was the perfect that was the logical choice of the draft was the third overall pick plus some extra picks for Rogers. And it didn't get done. Like why? I don't get it. If that was gonna happen, I think that's the deal it makes sense. But if it was gonna happen, it would happen already, I think. Yeah, Green I don't think the Green Bay didn't want to pull the well, they don't want to pull the shoot on it now. They don't, they don't want to pull the shoot on it now. But yeah. now I'm looking at it too. Like Rogers brought some guys back. So if you're going to bring in Jimmy G, maybe those guys go, you know what? I've already got 50, 60, 70 million bucks in the bank. I'm done too. You got rid of Rogers. I came back for him. I'm out. I'm done. Maybe that's, maybe that's what they're waiting for. Maybe that team just all folds up all of a sudden. Well, we've, and seen it's a this different story. we've seen this happen a, a bunch of times with Green Bay that if Rogers isn't healthy or Rogers isn't playing well, they're not a good team. <laughs> like if Aaron Rodgers isn't, a top five quarterback in the league this year, Green Bay doesn't stand a chance. Like that team, there's no team more dependent on their quarterback in this league than the Green Bay Packers are. If without Aaron Rodgers, they are they're a bottom ten team, I would say. Well, no, you can say that about any team. As I'm watching uh, Dak Prescott scramble right now, he gets injured. Dallas is done. What what, sure. what is what, what are the Bucks going to do if, if Brady goes down? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, no. <laughs> You know what I mean? So fair, you got to keep point. your quarterback. You got to keep your quarterback, Tebow. Don't bring don't. in Kyle. Kyle Trask, uh, <laughs> Kyle Trask from Florida. Yeah. Good, it could. I thought you were, I thought you were doing this, and I thought you were t-boning it. Right I thought you were t-boning too. Yeah, so I was like, oh no, let's just think about this for a minute. <laughs> no, but at this, at this point, guys, as long as the quarterbacks stay healthy, as what we talk about now today, as we as we wrapped up the Sunday, as we talk today, next week is a different is a different week because we're going to see what's going to happen on Sunday. You know, is somebody going to get injured? Or are we going to lose some linemen, some, some you know, free safeties and things of that nature? And they're going to go, well, what the hell's going on? All of a sudden, now they go, that team's not as good as we thought they were at the beginning of the year. 
Yeah. It's all about health and we got to see what happens. And we're getting up now with the young quarterbacks and we got to, we got like almost like everybody up between, you know, what is it between 21 and 25. And then you've got like Rogers Brady, you got a bunch of older guys. You start looking at these young hotshot quarterbacks throwing the, throwing the rock around you, pretty soon. You start looking, you go, can I get rid of this guy? Can I get rid of that guy? Like, how come I can't have one of those? Do you know what I mean? So we're going to see what's going to happen. And, and the first week is good. What are you guys thinking of Sunday football? Sunday football's finally back. I'm pretty excited about this. I am fired up. Me too, Jam. And we haven't touched my favorite game of the week yet. And that's the final one on Sunday with the Browns at KC. Yes, I did notice that. I did not wrap it up. My apologies on that. I kind of skipped over my boy. How can I do that? Looking at you, forgotten about <laughs> Baker Mayfield. That's, that is something on me. I am sorry on me. Uh, <laughs> Cleveland versus KC. This is going to be, to me, the high, this could be the highest scoring game of the, uh, the week, I think. Uh, yeah. Has potential. I think has potential. Those has two potential. quarterbacks are gunslingers, man. They are, yeah, yeah. Possible AFC championship game, and this is the rematch of last year's playoff game. Uh, the Browns are loaded on D. The Chiefs are loaded on offense. Odell Beckham's back, uh, which will open up the passing game for Jarvis Landry. Nick Chubb and Kareem are healthy. I think Nick Chubb has a huge year. Uh, Casey has a sour taste in their mouth from last year. So... Uh, they don't have uh, Sammy Watkins anymore. So I don't know. I think this comes down to last possession. I I like the Bears or sorry. I like the Browns plus six and a half here. Ooh. What about a straight pick em? Are you still picking the Browns in a straight pick em? Straight Forget pick the spread. Em. Straight not, a ch- not a chance. No way. I, I saw a stat the other day in the last 15. They're like one. 13 and one or in the last 16 it's like oh no sorry zero 14 and one in the last 15 they haven't won week one game in the last well, 15 that's games not a, are, that's not are a, we talking about, are we talking about the, the browns? last like 15 years anyway so. the browns yeah the browns yeah so, of course like who was yeah. gonna take them to, who's gonna take them to so, you'd ha- so i'd have to take the chiefs in the pick them i don't know even even for me even against the spread if the spreads i think i got the spread at five and a half or six and a half I'm taking Casey all day long. Casey's going to come out and show the Browns what a real football team looks like and show the Browns they are not ready to compete. There is no way the Browns are as good as Kansas City right now. Patrick Mahomes, probably the best quarterback in the league. Baker Mayfield, maybe the 20th best quarterback in the league. Clyde Edwards-Alaire may be just as good as running back as Nick Chubb. I think the Browns are overrated in this spot. I think Odell's a negative to that team. So this is an easy, this is an easy one for me. Give me KC and the points. I would take Kansas City up to like minus eight and a half. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be like a nine or 10 point game, maybe even 12 points for KC. Okay. Okay. Hang on now. Hang on. Okay. I'm going to, I've got KC to win on this I one. I totally but, disagree. Hang on. Hang on. What are you, so what are you calling here for the Kansas City and Cleveland? So what are you calling? Are you, well, calling, like, said, K, are can, you, are you calling KC by like 15? I think, uh, yeah, sure. I'll say KC wins by 12 points. 12 points. I could take the under. Yeah. 20 bucks. Well, how much? What do you give me? Like five to one odds, JM? Or? Uh, I'd <laughs> like I, to say I that. Could, and then I my could wife tease, would come down here. Down. Down. <laughs> I'll Let's give, go to it. I'll give you. I'll, 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 look at, I'll look at 365 right now. And I'll give you whatever the odds are on 12. Whatever they are. All right. Let, let me know what you want to do. Yeah. Because that's that, I'm in for that. If you're going to give me 12 points on that, I'll take. I'll take those guys all day. I honestly think that Cleveland's going to come out with a statement game. I think they're, they're just tired of being known as the Browns. I think they're going to come out. I think B- Baker Mayfield, this is a game. If you want to stand up and you're a true warrior, this is the game where you can come right off the beginning of the season. Even if even I mean, you'd have Cleveland to lose, if Cleveland can stay close and Baker Mayfield could show that what he's the progressions he's done, that's going to mean so much for that man's confidence and that team's confidence going forward. I, I I like KC, but I, I'm I'm not I'm I'm okay with Cleveland winning as well. I think it's going to be a close game, and I honestly I'm going to go with uh, Baker Mayfield coming out and smacking you right in the chin strap with your stupid little your little hot take you had. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's a lot closer than everybody thinks, and I believe that Baker Mayfield's going to come out. He's going to want to give you 
this is what's coming. Cleveland, get ready. Last year in the in the in the finals of the AFC last year, Cleveland had their chance. Mahomes got hurt. Uh, Baker played out of this world, and they still weren't even close. KC is just a far superior team. They're going to have a bad taste in their mouth from last year. Uh, you know, Garris, they got a bunch of young rookie quarterback cornerbacks in in Cleveland right now. But Tyreek, uh, Kelsey, they're going to eat up all day there all day. I think Alaire is actually kind of the key to this offense. I think he's going to get going this year. Uh, may have left some bad taste in people's mouth because he didn't have a great fantasy year, but still a decent year for a running back last year. I just think sh- straight up, I think Kansas City's just too much for Cleveland. I think uh, Cleveland might be a little overrated here. Uh, so I, week one, I if I'm the coach, offensive coach, I just pound the ball with Chubb. Pound of the first two, run the clock, you know, kind of that that's time been proven, off. That's been proven not to beat Kansas City, though. You can't beat Kansas City doing that because they're going to put up 28 points, man. Like, you're not going to hold, you're I, not gonna I, hold Kansas City under 30 points. That defense, I think, will stop. I, you got Clowney and you got uh, Garrett on the other side. That's going to be tough for Mahomes. He's going to have to scramble. They're going to get at him, I think. Nah, I don't know. I think this is going to be a good game. Regardless. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, I think it's going to be a great game as well. Uh, but I honestly think that, Flame, I think you're a little out in left field today, man. I think sitting in, I think sitting in the garage, sucking back on them tailpipe fumes, I think it's kind of <laughs> gotten to your head. I don't know about that, man. But, I just well, want I to make a statement, Jam. I don't think it's a five and a half point game. I think uh, I think the Browns, who are who who are they thought we were? What's that saying? Like, what's it? Dennis Green or Dennis Smith? They are who we they thought we were. That's exo- playoffs. You want to talk about playoffs? Yeah, I don't. No. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think five, Kansas City didn't cover anything last year, though. Like Kansas City was a team that they should have covered every game last year, and they didn't. So I think it's going to be a, a reversal this year. I think Kansas City is going to come out and, and blow the doors off some teams early. Man, what I would of- do. Go ahead, Chris. What I would do is tease it up to seven and a half. Then you're within the touchdown. I don't think they lose by a touchdown or more. Anyways. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm probably going to tease it up to like nine and minus nine and a half Kansas City. And I think that's like plus plus like 220 right now. So. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. I guess next week we're talking about Sunday. We're all going to have some bragging rights. Hey, who knows? Maybe even Flem will just not even be here. Because, I mean, that's what could have happened this week. I mean, maybe that's how it should have been. We would have yeah. known you were going to talk out of the side of your ass like you are now. Jesus Someone's going to do a jam now that you're the host. You're too calm. You know, you don't got the hot take in you. So oh, I well, I, I'm, I I'm wanted wearing to, my I wanted Cowboys to try to, jersey. I want to try to cut I'm loose wearing... like JM would. Well, yeah, I'm just trying to cut loose. I'm trying to keep this maintained today. And as the weeks progress, we'll get we'll get better. I'll get better. I'll, I'll be fired up. Flem, so, you can you can't uh, play back the last uh, or the first two minutes of last episode when he said Dak will not be in the lineup first game of the year. <laughs> Can we go back to be, that? No, no. I'm gonna that up, yeah. I, when he when he was in and I was sitting at work and I get the boom, boom, Dak Prescott to start the the loud fuck I released. I'm like what the hell's wrong? I'm like fucking Dak Prescott is starting on on Thursday. And they go. They go, yeah, he's a shitty team. I go, that's my quarterback, but I don't want him to start. I want this fucker out. I need draft picks coming up, man, and forty million bucks, and he's he's playing pretty well tonight. But I I don't know now. I'm still going to go with they're going to be one of the worst teams in the league. There's no way I can see Dallas doing anything. That's looking good, but he's not looking. That the rest of the defense isn't looking. Oh, the, the defense, the defense still looks the same as last year right now. Like they've given up three break, touchdowns through the air. I'll break it right now. If this, if the if the Dallas quarter, Dallas kicker. Makes it through week one, I'll be impressed. The amount of misses <laughs> this kid's already had tonight is, uh, is oh, absolutely ridiculous. It was 60 yards, Jan. <laughs> no, the one before yards. that. That's, that's automatic that. now, buddy. That's automatic no, what, now. That's, that's a hey, chip okay, shot. Okay, now next episode we'll get Jam out on the field and he will kick a 60-yarder for us all. <laughs> no, the furthest I probably could go is about 25. I think that's it. Jam, if you could kick a 25-yard field goal, I'll, I'll, I'll give you $100 you can kick a 25-yard field goal. I used to, I used to kick $100. 25 back, oh. when they, back in the day. I have to, yeah, Jam, you're not there. 25 anymore, bud. I throw some money into that. Too. That was seventeen. That was thirty. That was twenty <laughs> yeah. years ago. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, back in the day, we used to kick. I used to practice with the kicker. So yeah, no, I used to kick twenty fives, but straight on. I couldn't go. No. On. You moved me a little bit to the side. It was. It was like my golf game. It was all over the map. No, but couldn't, you know, I could get a couple twenty fives, but I, not even a fifteen. Not oh, even now, a fifteen. Now I probably couldn't even throw the fucking ball ten. I, yeah, I'd be sitting here talking about that 50. <laughs> Fuck you, Tebow. All right, guys. How do we feel about how do we feel about our Sunday picks, guys? So do you want to give you like your best three uh, bet picks of the week, Garrison? 
Oh, you want to do the Monday Nighter first, and then oh yeah, well, Monday. well, well, I, I just wanted like, how are you guys feeling about the sun our Sunday picks? I feel kind like of the, what I'm interested. I feel in. like the slate of games is kind of pretty. It's a weird, it's a weird slate. Like you know, a lot of games that are either going to be blowouts. Like you got your 49ers against Detroit. Then you got your like mad games. Like you're just two like you know bottom 15 teams. Like you got the Patriots, you got the Dolphins. They're not real, real contenders this year. Uh, you know, your Denver, your Giants, uh, New York against or the Jets against Carolina. I feel like there's not really many like marquee games to like get me going. Like I'm really pumped with the Bills against Steelers. I think that's a, that's a pretty easy Steelers cover there. Green Bay, New Orleans gonna be an exciting game to see Aaron Rodgers. But there's uh, there's not like four or five games I'm super pumped with this week. But uh, it's just so exciting, it's so great to have football back, and uh, I'm ready to no, go. But this there's, there's probably there's a couple of games that I'm stoked on. Like obviously the Thursday nighter, uh, and then I think that's I a think great that, game. Yeah, I think Sunday. I think Sunday at one o'clock. I'm probably looking at Buffalo Pittsburgh. I think that's going to be a really good game. So I'm kind of looking at that one. Then the 425, Cleveland and Kansas City. Uh, if you want to watch somebody just get that's pumped. That's a good game. You're right. Yeah, you want to get somebody watch somebody get pumped. San Fran's out there as well at Detroit. Then if you're looking, you know, and then you have, like you said, and then you also got Green Bay and New Orleans at 415. That's a game I think everybody's going to want to watch. They're going to want to see what happens with Rodgers. The Sunday Night is going to be, I think, a shit show. I think the Bears are going to fold up and become the Teddy Bears. Um, I, I think I think we're gonna an okay week. We're not in one where it's like I need to have my five TVs going and and the wife and kids can't talk to me. I think it's I think it's a week where at every time slot I think you got yourself a good game you're gonna watch. Oh, I'm gonna have three TVs going. Week one always jam. You gotta have as many TVs going. You know the red zone going. Get every update just as soon as they come in. Just come on, let's go. That's exactly it. So, guys, I'm looking at it now. Um, ideally, ideally, and I, I've been watching all these podcasts, and I've been looking at all these heroes online. Um, bat, they're battling. A lot of guys are going five or 500 football, and they're they're pretty good. Do you think we can overcome when we take our years, wins, and losses? Do you think we can overcome uh, a 500 record, each of us? If we, when we tally up all the wins and we tally up all the losses, are we looking at are we looking at being over 500? Is that what we're aiming for? I think to be a successful gambler, you got to win 54% of your bets. So I think we got to be over 50. So you got to win 51%, right? Yeah. I think with the juice to say you got to win 54% of the time is what like the math works out to just because you're paying juice sometimes. So I think that's like the theory, but uh, yeah, I think pretty easily. I don't know. I'm planning to be over 50%. If I'm not, I'm in some deep fucking shit. So. (laughs) (laughs) But Okay, so let's just we'll jump into the I want to jump into the Monday nighter, then we'll talk a bit more about what we plan for the uh, we'll plan for the week here or for the season. Um, so the Monday nighter, guys, seven fifteen. It looks like it is a go time, but it will probably won't start till eight thirty nine o'clock. It is the Baltimore Ravens, the most overrated team in the NFL, versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, the first official pre uh, uh, first official game. Um, for Las Vegas in that beautiful stadium. Um, and it is going to be a good game. If there is a weekend I ever wanted to be in Vegas in my life, this is the weekend I'd want to be in Vegas for, in my life. This would be one of the weekends I'd want to be there. What are you guys thinking of what's going to happen here out in uh, the Baltimore Vegas game? <clears throat> so I'm not too high on uh, Baltimore this year, especially after – just losing three of their running backs. Uh, they also well, got the bars in... out? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not not him yet. Uh, they got some wide receiver injuries too in uh, Bateman and Boykin. I, the Raiders are healthy on both sides of the ball. And with the crowd going nuts, I'd have to say probably the Raiders. I'd go the Raiders cover the four and a half at home on the Monday night. You've been looking at this one for a long time. Because I remember talking about like opening week with you like two or three months ago, and you said you have your eyes on the Raiders for uh, for that first Monday night game. I think it was four and a half, and it's still four and a half. I'm going to go the opposite direction. I am not a Ravens fan. I hate the Ravens. I would take the Ravens minus the four and a half. I think just they have they have too good of an offensive line. The Raiders aren't good enough on the D line. So I think uh, I think with Lamar Jackson at running back, they're going to pound the ball down their throat. Maybe even mix in some throws. So I think. Uh, I think Baltimore minus seven is a pretty pretty reasonable bet this week. 
Oh, oh my god, dude, you have given me Fleming. No, well, the Lions, the Lions the at four and a half. The Lions, I'm saying they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna beat four and a half the line. So I said two and a half points. Like Damn. I'm not saying it's gonna be seven. I'm saying they're gonna they're gonna cover the spread. They're gonna cover four and a half. I, I'm almost speechless, and there's only been a couple of times in my life I've been speechless. Man, dude, I'm not – Vegas all the way. I, I'm taking Vegas any which way I possibly can. Give me more Vegas. You, Flem – Baltimore hobbling in from a – from a, a, and a hobbling in is, is an understatement, and you're taking Baltimore. You like the offensive line. They're not moving fast, man. Lamar Jackson is not as good as he used to be. He was a he was a quarterback three years ago. He's not one now. I <laughs> honestly I take Vegas all day. Like like Chris said, with the crowd alone, that's worth three points. I honestly love it. I, I can't wait to have the ISO cams from the from the the luxury boxes on the end of the end zone. I'm hoping they allow the fans to catch the ball. The DJ's in there. Cristal will be flowing. Players are jumping in. It's going to be a good time, man. I, I, I'm excited to watch this game. Oh, I'm pumped to watch the game for sure. I just think uh, – I don't know. I I don't – I'm not high in Baltimore. Gus Edwards is a huge loss, like especially with Dobbins going down. But uh, their offensive line good. The defensive line's good. I think that's where the game's going to be won this week, and that's why I take them. But I do I do want to watch that. I will watch that game start to finish. I can't wait to see the atmosphere. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. And, uh, man – is it? Can you fly down to the states now and not quarantine for fourteen days? Because that's a serious no. consideration for me. Like that's uh, not, that's way. like a life event right now. Like to see the first game in this stadium would be, would be awesome. Eh? It'd be so cool. Oh yeah, the noise. Oh, you see, would probably is... you wouldn't get your hearing back for a few no. days. You wouldn't. Yeah. Now is does Vegas go? Do we see like so? The only other Vegas professional team we have is the Vegas Golden Knights. And obviously that team went so far in the first year, just on crowd alone and with, with the, 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 the hockey stuff that happened with them. Does that same passion from that fan base go over to NFL? And is it going to be bigger? Or is the NFL such a big ticket that that's going to become like a corporate event, almost like the Leafs are, or like another team where it's going to be, you're going to get these seats, but it's all kind of corporate and given to you. Or are the fans buying in in Vegas? And this is just going to be an absolute shit show. I, I don't, it's going to be a shit show. I don't know if it's going to be a hundred percent Vegas fans. That's going to be a shit show, but every week you're going to get a different crowd of people. Like you're going to get 10,000 fans from every road team coming into that game every year. I think we're going to see fights in the stands every week. I think we're going to see just, just absolute shit shows in the crowd every week. And I love it. I think it's going to be great. You're going to see mayhem. You're going to see mayhem. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm looking because I'm looking at now. Does Oakland, did the Oakland crowd kind of travel a little bit with Vegas for their first game to say, I watched, I watched their last one and I watched their first one as they switched over. And does it have an Oakland feel to it? Cause I, I the, the Oakland fans are crazy. I don't know if I'd want to play if they're going to adopt that mentality, that's going to be a fierce crowd. I would not want to play against. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, it's going to be a wild place. It's going to be a wild atmosphere. Yeah. I think there are the, there are the diehards that are going to, they're going to go down for the game. Like I bet you a bunch of guys that have front row seats now and in, in, well, did in Oakland are probably going to have in Vegas. So I think it's going to be a little bit of a similar, similar crowd. I think, uh, you know, over time, the fan base is going to evolve into uh to whatever they want it to be. I mean, you can set the ticket prices. If you know, if you set the ticket price at a certain point, you're going to get the corporate crowd coming. In, you're going to you're going to squeeze out the little guy. But for uh, you know, for something that's only got a nine, I think there's nine home games, eight home games on the year. I think the average joke in a forty, even if it's like you know a thousand dollars a ticket, like if you love it and want to go, I think it's going to be. Uh, I think that's the new hot spot in the NFL for sure. So my only my only problem with this is, and and I was looking at it. I probably would have put Buffalo at Vegas as the first game. You got yeah. Bills Mafia on a weekend <laughs> in Vegas, and then you get and the, the, the fans are coming back. Mm -hmm. Oh man, would that not be a party and a half? That would be like M Mardi Gras would have nothing to retire Mardi Gras because the party would have been that weekend. I think that would have been the weekend. I would have, if I was Goodell, I would have just said, it's got to happen this way. We got to get this thing going because I would love to have seen Buffalo in there. Or do it the other way and have a team with not that meant not that big of a fan base. Maybe Jacksonville in Vegas, just so you get the Vegas guys in there, get them a win, get the city talking, and things to that nature. 
But I mean, that is what it is. And that's why the NFL is the NFL and I am where I am. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that's what I think, guys. I'm going Vegas. What are we going to get around the horn here? Vegas. Clem, what do you got? Baltimore. Chris? Uh, yeah, Vegas. Vegas. Do you All take right, Vegas boys. money line? Yeah, I'd take him in the pick him, yeah. Yeah, okay. I would too, guys. <laughs> um, basically, guys, that wraps up week one. How are we feeling after week one, guys? Go ahead, Garrison. Good. Excited. So I'd probably say my gold, silver, and bronze picks are uh, – I'll go with gold uh, is Oakland plus four and a half. My silver will be the Browns plus six. <laughs> and and my bronze pick will be again against Fleming, Philly plus three and a half. All right. And my upset of the week out of every game, I'm gonna go with the Dolphins to beat the New England Patriots. Whoa. That's that's impressive. Now see you see. Chris is putting his his money where his mouth is. He's letting that brain and everything that he studies for is coming out today. <laughs> what do you got going? Of course, Baker Mayfield would take the Browns. But uh, so for, for me, my gold pick is going to be the Steelers plus six and a half. And that's coming from a Bills fan. I don't see I don't see the Bills winning by seven points. I mean, I think the Bills are the better team. I think Josh Allen's a better quarterback. But I just think Pittsburgh's got enough weapons on the outside to keep it close. The Bills traditionally can't really cover the second and third uh, wide receivers. So, you know, whether that's Deontay uh, Johnston or uh, Chase Claypool, Megatron, I think I think Pittsburgh does enough to keep it close. Uh, Silver, I'll take the Bengals plus three. I don't think uh, – I think three's I think three's a good number for that game. I think uh, Joe Burrow does enough to keep it close. So whether it's the Bengals – whether the Bengals only lose by two or they win money line, I think that could happen. That would be my silver. And my bronze will be uh, – Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. I got this one at five and a half, so I'm taking it at five and a half. That's what I was looking at. So I'm taking. Uh, I think KC wins by six. And uh, an upset. And the upset, I'm just going to go back to Cincy. I think Cincy takes on the money line too. So uh, that'll be my upset pick. All right, I'm not going to give my picks, guys, and I'll tell you guys why in a minute. I'm not going to give my picks. Don't let these guys do their picks, as they're very more intelligent than I am. As I am, believe it or not, I am a bit of a rookie when it comes to silver, bronze, and gold. I'm going to allow these guys to do it. As one of my friends said, who's not a football guy, who watched the podcast and said that, I don't know who that Chris guy is, but he's very intelligent when it comes to football. So I'm going to let, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Chris on this one and whatever he says, I'm going to buy into and I hope I get to make some money. So guys, I put my money behind Chris. So make sure you guys do the same. That's what I'm going with. My foot, my non-football buddy, Thinks Chris is a smart guy in football, and so do I. So I'm going to go with Chris this week, and that's what I'm going to do is what Chris says I'm going to lay down the money on. How? Uh, so what are you guys thinking of that? I think that's why Garrison's, Garrison's the analyst. That's why he gets paid the big bucks. So uh... that's, ex- that's exactly <laughs> it. And when somebody comes to me, guys, just uh, my friends are watching it. They're, they're, they're adding the, 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 the YouTube channel, and they're coming to me and saying, man, they're, they're talking about Fleming. They're saying how he's a leaf fan, obviously. But Chris, you've been getting a lot of love from my buddies that are saying, hey, man, you really know what you're talking about. And you're very intelligent. So whatever you're doing, man, just keep up the great work. Um, and one of my buddies said that it looks like the three of us have a little bit of a dynamic that we really enjoy. But he enjoys it. He's not a football guy, just kind of likes to see the banter. So I think we're, we're on the right path here, boys. And I think that uh, that is where we're going to end up. And I hope the season goes well for us. Yeah, for sure. No, I agree. I think uh, some good chemistry coming out of us three. I don't think Garrison's the smart one on the podcast, but uh, <laughs> believe that, you can have for this week. I don't know. Well, yeah. well we're gonna know. Ne- we're gonna know next week for sure if it, he's the smart one. If he's well, at seventy percent, I'm not even talking next week. It, yeah. It's a long year, and it's a long year, and uh, it does come and go start, in ways. At the start of sure. the season, I like to take the points. You always, when they give you free points, Vegas doesn't really know what's going on either. The first week, it takes them. A, a week or two to get their footing too. So I don't know. I usually take the points the first week. So yeah. we'll see what happens come Sunday. No, that's, no that's, that's, that is a good way to do it. Yeah. Take the points early. Sorry, guys. Absolutely. Guys. Is there anything else we want to add to this podcast at all? Uh, we want to add anything else to this week, guys. No, I got nothing, but just uh, don't gamble more than you can afford to lose and uh, have a fun week. I mean, it's going to be, it's great to have it back. 
it's going to be the best, you know, four, it's the best four or five months in the year for me, for me, at least starting right now. So, I mean, football starting up, hockey starts next month. We're getting into that uh, primetime sports season. Exactly, yeah. guys. Exactly. Guys, yet, yet again, know your limits. It's a cliche. Know your limits, play within it, guys. Listen, don't, don't gamble. Don't gamble your Xbox or your house away over a football season. Make sure you're playing within your limits, guys. We're here for entertainment. We're going to bet. These guys may bet more. I'm a $5, five guy. I just, that's all I am, guys. I'm a pro line guy. I'm, I'm, I'm inexpensive, five, ten dollars a week. Just to keep me interested and talk with the boys, we're here for you all week, guys. Don't forget, though, on Sunday, if you are looking for food, please call Jack Cook's Pub at uh, 436 Dundas Street West in Belleville. Uh, Ashley and the crew over there will hook you up with your wings. And if you have nowhere to go, go watch a game over there. Uh, I think it's going to be a good time. Don't forget to follow them on Facebook. As well, guys, don't forget, uh, we got the uh, Boo Sports Club. We are the Boo Sports Club football uh, talk. Uh, we're going to we'll kind of evolve throughout the season. Hopefully, we're going to have a couple of guests in that are going to give us their picks and special analysts and things of that nature. Uh, we're hoping to get a couple of guys on the podcast that have a lot of football experience and can just kind of tell us a couple of stories on what they've seen maybe in college and, and university and things of that nature and possibly some CFL, uh, CFL legends coming on. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to add to the podcast? No, just uh, if, you, if you're watching this video on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, check us out at uh, Boot Club Sports on Facebook. And uh, we're on all, all major platforms for podcasts. So uh, Spotify, Google, uh, check it out, Boot Club Sports. And uh, yeah, the home to, uh, to multiple podcasts, not just the, uh, the NFL podcast. We have a hockey podcast. And uh, we're, growing, uh, we're growing with the times as well. So yeah, big things exactly. to come. Exactly, guys. So if you want to hear my voice, as well as the analyst down below me, Chris, as well as the, the uh, sounds like the left field smoker, Flem. <laughs> uh, get us on Spotify. Get us in your cars, guys. That's where you want to hear us when you're driving down the highway. That's what we're here for. Um, your wife may hate our voice, but you'll love them when you take Chris's picks this week and you get yourself a lot of money, and Chris is going to help you get that. Guys, don't forget, we're here every week. We'll make sure the podcast is out. Before the Thursday nighter, this is kind of a bit of an off one, guys. Anything else you guys want to add today? Nope, that's it for me, bud. No, Chris, yeah. anything else? Uh, have a good Sunday, everyone. Get your fellow football, and uh, we'll talk next week. Guys, that's it as well. If, and, and then tell us the picks. If we screwed up, please please let us know on what we've done for you. Uh, if we've given you some money, don't forget we do take donations as well. Uh, just yeah. do donate that to us, and uh, we'll, we'll gladly do it for you. As well, don't forget to, um, to do the uh, – where we you play it again? Uh, play sports? Uh, what do we do? Pay it forward sports. Pay it forward sports, guys. Don't forget to buy your tickets. Like us on like, – like them on Facebook as well. We'll share it uh, just to make sure you don't miss out on any trips. As well, the golf – good golf tournament coming up in October. We've got ho- – we've got a hockey tournament coming up as well, guys. You know, $20 tickets to get yourself out of Canada in the wintertime. You can't beat that. You'll never find a price like that again. Let us know what you want to do, guys. And that's it for us this week. We will see you next week. And we'll talk next week. We're going to talk about our picks from this week. So we'll recap this week. We'll see how everybody else's picks are doing. And uh, we'll start it all over again next week. So, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, have yourself a great evening. And, hey, and enjoy this Sunday, guys. It's back. Football's back. Enjoy the crowds and enjoy everything else. Football's back, baby. Here we go.